So in this video, I'm going to be going through uh, an extension of last week where we uh, focused on a linear regression, right? So where we were trying to optimize this particular function, right? Um, but on top of that, we're going to do something, well, a few more things extra. So we're going to start penalizing the weights because we don't want them to be too big. And the motivation behind that is usually when you do regression, the weights will try its best to fit the data all the time. But you don't want to do that because uh, this thing called overfitting, right? So it, it will fit so much of the data that will kind of ignore what's really going on in the real world. Um, now, what's a good example? So if you take, for example, cancer data sets and you try to classify this patient's got cancer and this one doesn't, what will happen is that the, these weights will always become... Uh, well, it will always be non-zero. Depend, like it will weight all the genes as being at least slightly significant, because one, you don't have enough data to confirm your hypothesis, uh, and two, there's just so many correlated variables that um, so some some of the variables at least will become non-zero for no particular reason, just uh, just noise. So what we want to do is we want to penalize those weights. We want to try try and drive them to zero. So if if it's getting big. This L function is going to be big, and what you're trying to do is minimize this function, right? So you want to try and try and drive these Ws down, but at the same time you want to fit the data as well. Okay, so we we got two objectives. This alpha is how how badly you want these Ws to go to zero. Similar thing is happening with this absolute value of Ws, but I will I'll get to that in a bit. All right, so let's let's get on with uh, today's lesson. So. Um, so we're going to import uh, scikit-learn as usual, uh, the, the linear model, the linear regression in this case, right? Um, yeah, so we're going to create a, uh, we're going to create a random data set. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why I showed you the histogram, but anyway. Uh, so I'm going to create 400, 400 observations, but this time my, dimensional, my dimensionality is going to be 100. Okay, so I have 100 weights. Uh, in fact, why don't I make it 4,000 for now? I'll, I'll come back to uh, this in a bit. Uh, but there's 4,000 weights, but the key thing over here is this time, just notice how I have created my, my true Ws to be zero initially, and then I'm going to choose 10 of those um, to be non-zero. Okay, so I choose an index, so random.choice is going to be choosing 10 indices. And I'm going to set them to some random values. Okay, so let me just show you what uh, what W looks like. So W two looks like this. It's mostly zero, and there's some places where it's non-zero. Okay. Um, oh, and of course, um, with, with the error, uh, with, with the Y observed at least, I do add error to make it a bit more of a hard problem. Okay, so let's uh, let's keep moving on. Um, let me just delete this side because it's not needed. So we're going to model it. Okay, so model is linear regression, and then we're going to fit x and y. So this y, I probably should have called it y observed, but anyway, let's let's uh, leave that to the side. Okay, so it, it seems to fit fairly well. Okay, um, let me actually let me just I think four thousand was way too much. Uh, let me just make that four hundred, and then you do the same thing. Okay, so you can you can see that when I do a normal regression, it does tend to pick out the big peaks, but everywhere else you can see it's a bit jittery, right? So it's not exactly zero. In fact, it, it never will be zero when you if you don't have enough observations. So when I did set the number of observations to four thousand, um, it had enough to figure out, well, mostly enough to figure out it, it must be close to zero, right? Um, so yeah, so it's it's going to be a bit jittery, but um, okay. And one thing we really need to look at when we're doing any form of uh, machine learning or linear regression for that matter, is that you need to look at the mean squared error. Okay, so I'm going to create 50 tests, or well, it, actually it's more important that you look at the mean squared error of the test set. Okay, so I'm going to create, again, a, uh, a random test set, and then I'm going to get the true value. The true value um, in this case is x test uh, matrix multiplied by your the true weights, okay, and then um, we're going to test them against my predicted x, okay. So, so here what we're doing is the y true minus the y estimated. Notice how I didn't add any noise in this case because 
the, the true value of y is, is not uh, it's nothing to do with noise okay so I look at the mean squared error and I end up getting 4.55 okay um, oh sorry it's a different value so it's 0.38 okay um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at ridge regression so ridge regression is what we what we talked about right at the beginning over here so ridge regression is everything up until uh, everything up until this wj squared okay so if ignore this uh, bit of absolute value ridge regression is when you have this penalized function okay so now we're going to try and drive some of the weights down to zero so let's see what happens then Okay, so we, we have that. Um, and now let's compare, the, it's, it's not, so visually at least, it's not really that much different to, uh, to normal linear regression. Let's, let's see what the mean squared error is. 0.39, it's actually slightly worse. Um, I'll, I'll get to that, it, 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 it probably shouldn't have been 0.39. Let's, okay, let, let's do one thing. Let's, let's change how, how much we want to penalize it by. So let's change the alpha to five actually. So it was two before. Uh, the alpha value I want to change it to five, and let's see how it goes. Okay, uh, fingers crossed. It, no, it doesn't. Okay, so it, it seems a bit resistant to how big the alpha value is. Um, finally, finally, uh, let's move on. I'll, I will come back to uh, why that's why, why that why that's happening. So let's from scikit learn linear model. We're going to import lasso instead here. So before we import a ridge regression, now we're going to import lasso. So again, this is a linear model. But lasso is where you have this thing, but except without the alpha wj squared. So we have the absolute values now. Okay, so we're concerning ourselves with absolute values, not the wj squares. The good thing about this is that it, it tends to uh, push the weights down to zero, exactly zero. Okay, so it's not it's not point zero zero one. It's actually exactly zero with the lasso, which is a which is a very useful. Um, uh, thing when it comes to some some type of um, regression, especially when you're dealing with a large number of weights, okay, you do actually want to drive them down to zero. So now let's look at the uh, estimator. Okay, so it's 0.14. It's more than half what the uh, ridge regression or the normal linear regression was. Okay, so it's it's doing a lot lot better doing 0.14 because you penalize W enough to actually drive it down to zero. This model is performing a lot bit better. Let me introduce you to another one last uh, linear regression model called ARD regression. So the ARD stands for Automatic Relevance Determination. So it determines if a, a particular weight is relevant to, to, the, uh, to the regression. Okay, so if I run this one, so it's again, uh, with this one, it doesn't, um, well, it drives it down to zero quite, quite harshly, right? But um, not sure if it's exactly equal to zero, but anyway, so let's look at the mean squared error, 0 0.12. It actually does better than lasso. Okay, so um, it's, it's, a, it's a Bayesian method and it is stronger than lasso in some sense of trying to drive it down to zero. Okay, so it has uh, better properties of coming down to zero. But the main advantage of this is that it does not have any, um, any intercepts that you need to care about. Okay, so, so sorry, not to set, uh, no parameters that you need to care about. So over here, I had to set alpha to 0 0.1. Uh, I had to set alpha to 5 over here. So there is no, there's no, um, these numbers, the alpha beta values, you really don't have to worry about them when it comes to ARD regression. And that's the best part about it because it's a Bayesian method. Um, there are no so-called hyperparameters that we need to worry about. So it's, it makes things a whole lot easier. Okay, so... Um, and in this case, it happened to actually drive it down so far down to zero that it was better than lasso. Okay, so let me rerun this regression, but this time I'm going to put it down to 40 observations. Okay, so the dimensionality is 100, but I have 40 observations. Um, now this time, the linear regression is going to be is going to, is going to do horrible. Okay, and the reason for that is I don't have enough equations, so I have. 40 observations for 100 weights that I'm trying to figure out. And that's really bad. So if you think about uh, back to your uh, basic maths, if you have two variables, x and y, you, you know that you need at least two equations to figure out x and y, right? So in this case, I have 
100 weights, but don't I have far less than 100 equations. I have only 40, 40 equations to play around with. And because of that, I get this really bad uh, outcome. So let me let me do the same thing. Um, actually, let's just look at the mean squared errors, 8.49. That's also because we don't have enough data. Okay, so the mean squared error will be bad even with rich regression. But so if I do rich regression, let's see what it, what it ends up being. Um, okay, so visually not that much better, but if I look at the mean squared error, it does slightly better. Okay, so it's 8 before 8.49. The mean squared is 7.9 when you do rich regression. Let's retry the same thing with lasso. Okay, so you can see it's doing a lot better because it actually drives things down to zero. Okay, to exactly zero. So in this case, 2.55. So it's 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 less than a third of the error of uh, normal regression. Okay, in fact, it's it's, it's less than a third of, of rich regression, which is really good. Okay, and finally, ARD regression. 2.60, so it does slightly worse than uh, lasso, but um, but just just one thing. Yes, you don't have to worry about um, worry about alphas. Oh, and one thing I really forgot to mention is why I had this fit intercept equals false, and that's because in my original thing I did not have an intercept value. Okay, so I, I specifically just to make things easier, I put uh, the, the intercept down to zero. Okay, I probably should have said that up here as well. Actually, yeah. So I have set fit intercept is false okay so we're just concerned about weights um, so yeah so that's that's the that's the uh, uh, thought process about uh, penalized regression now let me sh quickly show you a real a somewhat of a real world example okay and the real world example comes from uh, comes from doing things like uh, X-rays and uh, I think son sonography, right? So what, what what happens is let me let me just quickly draw a diagram. So let's say I have the um, the cross section of of a skull. Okay, so this is going to be a really bad skull. Uh, so and anyway, you you get the point, right? So so that's a skull. So these are the X-rays that, that that you see. But what what's really happening is it's it sends beams through 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 your through your skull. Okay, uh, so uh, this this is a class of problems called inverse problems. Okay, so it, and what it does is it sums up the pixel well the density values of your skull. Okay, because it can't remember it can't quite see your skull. All it sees is its cross section. And it collects these values. So over here, it will say the the sum of the densities that I observed is five. Over here, it's seven, because it went straight through here. It's zero. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, let's say two and one and so on. Okay, but it'll do the same thing at different angles. Okay, so because it went straight through over here, it'll be zero, it'll be, it'll be one, five. Anyway, you get the point. So it's going to take all these different different measures at different angles as well and it's going to try and reconstruct what's inside okay so blah 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 so what's happening what what you can think of this is it's it's saying okay let me uh, let me uh, put this line as a bunch of zeros except when it reaches a um, a bone it will be one and then zero, zero, zero. Okay, so these become your x's. So, for example, this line, the horizontal line, I would uh, let's let's look at okay, this one, zero, zero, zero. Uh, actually, my mistake that all those. Um, yeah. So uh, sorry. Uh, let me keep going. So zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, and so on. So whenever whenever it's on the skull, it will be a one. Everywhere else, it's it's a it's a zero. Um, Oh, sorry, my uh, my mistake. This, this is a bad example. Um, so, so actually, if the weights. So these red things are the weights. Okay, so that's what you want to try and figure out, and you don't see the weights. What you do see is you see these x values. So you know the angle. Um, that you measured it on, and you know like which line it is, 
So you can you can kind of make a make a X thing, and you want to try and figure out the weights. So rather actually these this should be zeros and ones, it should be a whole bunch of zeros and you know values 0.5, density 0.1, and so on. Okay? But most of them are zero. And you have your Y observations, which are your final final things that you observe. Okay. Um, so you're given your x, which are which is kind of these angles turned into uh, a matrix of uh, zeros and ones. Okay, so the ones kind of represent which line it went through. I'm just going to leave it there. I'll probably come back to this this later. But you can you can look at it over here. So when when we do just ridge regression, which is the L2 penalization, you can see it doesn't construct the uh, X-ray quite well, and you can kind of see the lines as well. Whereas with L1 penalization, because it drives things down to zero, it gives you a bit more of a crisp video. Okay. Um, I'm just going to leave it there. But I've I've got the code over here, which you can play around with on on my GitHub repo. But um, yeah, so if you do have any questions or comments, please let me know, and uh, thanks for watching.